I bet you've missed those slurps, haven't you? You're watching Pat Plays, and I know it has been a while, and I know that the title of this video, and the fact that I've got these uh, pumpkin Halloween themed decorations up behind me, is a little bit ridiculous because, you know, Halloween was what? two, three weeks ago or something now. But unfortunately, I've not really been able to shoot any of these videos for a while. And I definitely wanted to do something that was sort of slightly Halloween themed because as you all know, it's one of my favorite times of year. So even though this is supposed to be like a Halloween episode and you'd think that I'd be like talking about specifically horror related things, that's not what I want to do because I mean in every single episode of Coffee and Nostalgia that I've done so far, I've pretty much talked about horror in one form or another in every single one of those videos. So in this one, I just wanted to sort of ease myself back into doing these. Hopefully I can carry on doing them a bit more regularly like I was before. And I wanted to do something simple, just going through all the Blu-rays and DVDs and physical media that I've bought throughout this entire year so far. So I guess you could call it like Pat's Pickups or something like that. <gasps> What's that? <laughs> so without further ado, let's crack on and take a look at the things which I have treated myself to throughout this year. So first up is something that I've actually had my eyes on for years and years, but I've never been able to actually get hold of it. And that is this Japanese special edition release of uh, Gremlins and Gremlins 2. And as you can see, this comes with a limited edition figurine uh, attached to the front of it of Mohawk from Gremlins 2. And I remember seeing pictures of this box set when I was younger uh, on the internet and I've never been able to find it anywhere or find any information about it. So of course, all the packaging and all the information is in Japanese. You open it up and you get the two separate films in their own separate cases. And when you open them up inside, they both have these information cards which again are all in Japanese but from what I can put together I think that this limited edition box set had a competition where you could fill out this form that's inside one of these cases and then you'd send it in for a chance to win this gizmo doll which you can see the picture of on the front of the packaging and the cool thing about that gizmo figure specifically is that it's the one that was made by Jun Planning which is a Japanese toy manufacturer and they made the Mohawk Mogwai which as you've seen I already own that and this was the gizmo replica which would go alongside with that Mohawk replica. So next up we've got another eBay purchase from earlier this year and that's this Fast and Furious 1 to 5 uh, Blu-ray box set. So this includes a Blu-ray and a DVD each of the films in the franchise from 1 up to 5 which in my opinion are the only ones worth watching but then again that does include the fourth film and that one is absolutely terrible. Just stay away from that. So the real reason that I bought this box set in particular is because I wanted to have Fast and Furious 1, 2, 3 and 5 on Blu-ray. Next up we've got this Blu-ray media book uh, release of the Blomkamp trilogy and this set includes Blu-ray discs of District 9, Chappie and Elysium. So it's not exactly a trilogy box set but I always call them the Blomkamp trilogy because they're all loosely set within the same universe and they all share the same sort of aesthetic and look especially with the robotic technology which follows throughout all of the films. And because because this is a media book set it also has sort of like a built-in booklet section to the case with tons of behind the scenes information about all three films and some concept artwork and production stills. Next up is another eBay purchase and this one I sort of bought on a whim. Normally I go for the buy it now as are the best offers because I just can't be asked bidding but with this Tarantino Blu-ray box set in particular I'd seen it going for well over a hundred pounds and over two hundred dollars on American listings and somebody put a listing of it up with a starting bid at about £17 and I left it right up until the last minute and nobody had bid on it so I just thought sod it I'll just put the first bid on and I got it so I'm guessing that the person who was selling it didn't realize how potentially rare this particular box set is and how much it's supposed to go for so this box set is called Tarantino XX and it's his first 20 years of films and one of the main things that drew me towards it was just the artwork Work throughout this entire set is absolutely awesome and the reason I wanted a Tarantino box set in the first place was because there's a lot of his films that I haven't seen 
but I bought the box set on purpose to make myself watch his films because I do love Tarantino movies but there's just so many that I've never bothered giving my attention to. So unfortunately it doesn't include all of his movies but I'm pretty sure there's only one or two that aren't included in this set. So since this is a Halloween episode let's actually talk about a horror franchise. So as far as limited edition and special edition box sets go, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise haven't really been treated as well as say Halloween and Friday the 13th which as I've shown you in the past have both been given really extensive special edition complete sets of the entire series with all the films being restored and released with tons and tons of extras. Now there is actually a Blu-ray set for A Nightmare on Elm Street which I have shown you before but it's this absolutely terrible bog standard release where the films themselves don't even get their own separate discs. They're all squished inside this one Blu-ray case and half of them share a disc with another film. And before this Blu-ray set I had another collection of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise which was on DVD and unfortunately I got rid of this box set quite a few years ago but I do have some footage of it right here from the fan film that I made in 2010 Patrick Holt's Nightmare but what I did end up buying quite recently is this box set right here of the Nightmare on Elm Street films which is a New Line Cinema Platinum Series release of all the Nightmare on Elm Street films 1 through 7 and also includes a bonus DVD disc titled The Nightmare Series Encyclopedia which is full of behind the scenes and featurettes all about the making of the series. So unfortunately this isn't Blu-ray, like I said I do have the films on Blu-ray so that I can watch them in the best quality but as for just displaying purposes is, this is the set that I would display because it just looks absolutely awesome and I love how the spines of each of the DVDs line up to show this reverse shot of Freddy with his claw hidden behind his back and each of the separate DVD cases come packaged with their original theatrical poster on the front and then this last one with this really crazy box art is that special bonus disc the Nightmare series encyclopedia and also included in the box were these old school 3D glasses with the Nightmare on Elm Street logo on the side and these were included so that you could watch the 3D portion of Freddy's Dead the Final Nightmare and as well as all this you get this pretty extensive booklet which is full of behind the scenes stuff and the making of each of the films in the series. So next up again on DVD this time is a box set which I actually mentioned in a previous video when I was talking about Bill and Ted and this was an American only release of the first two films in a special edition DVD package called Bill and Ted's Most Excellent Collection. So like I said this is a pretty rare American only release which I just happened to stumble across on eBay again so I jumped right on it and got it for about 20 quid something like that and I'm really happy that I did because it's such a cool little collector's item and when you open the set up as you can see there's some of the historical figures and there's Death and he's looking really weird I don't know what that little smile is all about. So inside here you get three DVD cases, of course you've got the first film, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, this one looking slightly different to the UK release. Then you've got Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey on another disc, and the box art that's used for this is exactly the same as the UK release. And then finally you get a third DVD case which is titled The Non-Bogus Disc. And this whole thing is made out to look like a demo tape for the Wild Stallions music. And this includes tons of old school making of footage for the films, as well as the very first episode of the Bill and Ted cartoon series. And staying on the topic of Bill and Ted, I also got these two steelbook releases of the first and second film. And these are absolutely stunning limited edition releases from an American company called Shout Factory. So again, both of these are US imports. And these are honestly some of the best looking steelbooks that I've ever seen. I honestly just love everything about these steel books. I love the colours that they've chose for both of them. So both of these releases have a ton of special features including commentary tracks for both of the films. Unfortunately this doesn't have Keanu Reeves on them but you do get Alex Winter and the director and one of the writers 
for both films as well. And what I was really hoping to get out of these releases was some more information on all those deleted scenes and the alternate ending, which I made a Pat Plays video all about for Bogus Journey. They do actually talk about how much was omitted from the final film. Oh, is that when we started to call it Bill and Ted's omitted <laughs> journey? I remember journey. the day you did that. I remember the very day that you coined that phrase, Bill and Ted's omitted <laughs> journey. Yeah, because we just get these pages that were blank. Yeah, omit, 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 omit. omit. It did include some behind the scene photographs, which I've never actually seen before, with the proof that they actually did shoot some of that alternate ending with their fears coming back and attacking them in the van. And they also interview the guy that did all the special effects for the movie and they show that inside his workshop he still has the giant easter bunny which they used whilst filming those scenes so as well as getting these blu-rays on the lead up to bill and ted 3 face the music coming out into cinemas i also pre-ordered this movie book uh, bill and ted's most excellent movie book which is just a huge collection of behind the scenes photographs and information on all three films, including publicity stills and character bios for all the films. So it's a pretty good read with a lot of new information about these films and especially about the latest one. And I'd say it's a must have for any Bill and Ted fan. But unfortunately, again, it didn't delve deep into those deleted scenes from Bogus Journey, apart from this one Polaroid shot of the eight foot Easter Bunny. And this wasn't the only movie book which I got Got this year i also purchased this back to the future ultimate visual history which is the revised and expanded edition which they've released for the 35th anniversary of the back to the future trilogy and this book is absolutely awesome and definitely a must-have for any back to the future fan and it makes that bill and ted book just look like a kiddie's picture book or something because this is just absolutely massive you also get a few sort of prop replicas from the film so you get this whole holographic version of the photograph which Marty holds in the first Back to the Future film which make it look like his brother and sister are being erased from existence. You get a copy of the letter which Doc writes in 1855 and leave to be delivered to Marty at the end of Back to the Future 2. You get a copy of the newspaper as seen in Back to the Future Part 2. You get the letter which Marty writes for Doc in 1955 warning him about being shot when he goes Back to the Future and just tons and tons of other things like that making this just an absolutely awesome movie book and of course the 35th anniversary of back to the future can only mean one thing and that is another back to the future blu-ray release for the 35th anniversary so as well as it being the 35th anniversary i actually had a pretty decent excuse for buying this set of films yet again and that's because this is the first time that all three have been released in 4k and of course since they're some of my favorite films i had to splash out a little bit more and get the zavi exclusive steelbook version version of the set which is just awesome because once you line all three of the steel books up together it makes a full profile shot of the DeLorean with Marty inside but even though the artwork on the front looks cool for me it's the film shots which they've chosen to use on the back of the steel book which I think are the coolest part of it and also on the inside of all the sets as well they've used some really good shots so with all three you get the film obviously on a 4k blu-ray disc and then you get all the special features on a standard blu-ray and all of these are the same special features which have been released in all the other countless releases of back to the future apart from in the case of the third film within that steelbook you also have a third disc and this one is an extra blu-ray disc with special features that have been added specifically just for this set and a lot of them are all quite recent so there's the documentary about the back to the future musical which is quite recent and funnily enough there's a featurette on this disc which with Bob Gale, the producer of the trilogy, and he's walking you around the Hollywood Museum, which is a museum that I've actually been to in LA, and they've just recently opened up the first ever Back to the Future trilogy museum exhibit at this museum. So I guess when I went, I was, what, six years too early. <laughs> and the reason I'm bringing this up is because the one screen used DeLorean, which I haven't seen, which is the part three DeLorean that I've told you all about, which is privately owned, has actually been loaned by the private owner to the Hollywood Museum and is currently on display. So as long as it stays there for a good few more years, I might actually have a chance of completing the task of seeing all the remaining screen-used DeLoreans in person. <laughs> 
Okay, now let's have a look at a few more Steelbook Blu-ray editions which I've purchased throughout this year. Starting with Lawless, which is one of my absolute favourite films. So this is an awesome looking steelbook and I've never actually owned this film on Blu-ray before so with it being a favourite I wanted to make the effort of getting a steelbook version of it. Next up we've got two steelbook editions of The Place Beyond the Pines which is one of my favourite Ryan Gosling movies even though he's only in the first third of the film. So first up is this UK release and to be honest I wasn't really blown away with the look of this steelbook. I think it's a pretty bog standard boring looking steelbook so I also purchased this French release which is much better looking in every way and the shot which they've used on the front of the steelbook is one of my favourite shots from the movie and again this includes the film uh, both on DVD and Blu-ray. Next up is this gorgeous looking steelbook release of Edward Scissorhands. Again this is another instance where it's one of my favourite films or at least was one of my favourites when I was growing up and and I've only ever had it on a DVD release, I've never purchased it on Blu-ray and so when I was looking for a Blu-ray for it I spotted this special edition steelbook and just thought that I had to have it because it just looks so nice. Straight on to another Tim Burton movie now, this time with Sleepy Hollow and this is actually the 20th anniversary limited collector's edition on Blu-ray and what's cool about this set is that it also includes the Washington Irving classic story The Legend of Sleepy Hollow which of course is the story that the film is based on. So this is sort of like a media book release of the film. So next up obviously is a film that I inevitably had to get once I got a 4K Blu-ray player and that of course is Logan. And again with it being a favourite I didn't want to just get any bog standard release. I wanted to get something that was at least a little bit of a special edition. And so with this 4K release of the film and included within the case is this small collection of publicity still postcards Cards. and these include shots of Hugh Jackman portraying the Wolverine character through most of the films that he was in. So you've got X-Men 1, that's X-Men First Class, The Wolverine, X-Men Days of Future Past, X-Men Apocalypse and finally of course Logan. And then also included within the slip cover is the theatrical poster of the film. But I just don't know why these Blu-ray sets include posters. What is the point? They have to be folded to fit inside the cases. So next up is another set of films which once I got my 4K player I just had to get 4K versions of them. And that is the Blade Runner films. Now what I'm showing you here is the original standard Blu-ray editions of Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049 which I already owned which I've now replaced with these 4K special edition sets. Starting here with obviously the first one, Blade Runner. And even though there's no way of telling from the outside of this box set, this is actually a French version of this release which I bought on purpose because, well, it was cheaper than getting the English edition. <laughs> and from the outside it looks exactly the same. So this set is sort of like an ultimate release of the first Blade Runner film. You get one disc which has the final cut version of Blade Runner which has been remastered in 4K and then on a separate standard Blu-ray disc you also get the theatrical cut of the film everybody's favourite. You get the international cut of the film and then also the director's cut as well. So that's four different cuts of Blade Runner. Oh and you also get a fourth disc which is the final cut on DVD. Just in case for some reason you didn't have a 4k player or a blu-ray player but you still bought this release of the film. <laughs> This set also includes this cool little booklet which on one side is called Blade Runner from the Archive and is ram full of behind the scenes photographs from the making of the film and then you flip the booklet over and on the reverse you have the art of Blade Runner which is full of tons of concept art and drawings from the pre-production of the movie. And next up we have the first ever 4K Blu-ray which I bought and that was this HMV exclusive release of Blade Runner 2049 and I think this is is probably one of the best looking releases of Blade Runner 2049 and it immediately caught my eye because I'd never seen this box art which they've used on the front I've never actually seen that before so this is another blu-ray set where one of the things that comes with it is a stack of these postcard art prints which in this case is different scenes taken from the film 
when you open up the case which is housing the discs you've got that shot of Kay and Joy uh, on the rooftops in the rain and then inside that you've got three discs obviously you've got the 4k version of the film you've got the blu-ray version of the film and then you have a third disc which is all the special features the set also comes with this booklet which again is just full of behind the scenes information about the making of the film and quotes taken from the director and the people involved and then finally it also includes this poster which is the same cover art which they've used for this 4k blu-ray release but again i don't see what's the point in including these posters because the whole thing is just full of creases so what's the point nobody's going to put it on the wall and there we have it that is a wrap that's pretty much everything blu-ray dvd and physical media wise that i've treated myself to throughout this entire year none of what i've just been speaking about even comes close to the 4k blu-ray set which i'm going to be talking about in the next video that's right it's that big of a deal that it needs an entire video just for that one thing and anybody that's watching this that knows me might be able to guess what I'm talking about. Just wait and see next time. Thank you again for joining me and watching another episode of Pat Plays. I guess you could say this was the first episode of Pat's Pickups. So yeah, thanks again for watching and I will see you again next time. <laughs>